So this evening we have Marina Cella from Sarah Lawrence College joining us today to talk about her institution. And we are thrilled to have you here. Thank you and welcome Marie. Thank you, Bridget, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As Bridget said, my name is Marie Notella. I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Sarah Lawrence College, and I've been in college admissions for almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years in the spring. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing with you about Sarah Lawrence tonight. Um, certainly put any questions in Q&A, as Bridget said, um, specific to anything that we're talking about, or if you just have general college admissions questions, I'm happy to address those as well. So as things occur to you, go ahead and put them in Q&A, and we'll make sure that we address them by the time that we end the session tonight. So in terms of the few things that I'm going to be going over, first I'll give you sort of an overview of the beginnings of Sarah Lawrence, tell you a little bit about the unique academic model that we have, and then talk a little bit about the admissions process and financial aid for Sarah Lawrence. So to get us started, if you're looking at your screen, that's a picture of the Barbara Walters Campus Center that was completed in the fall of 2019. So that is our newest building on campus. A little bit of background information. We were founded in 1926 as a women's college. We went co-ed in 1968, and now are welcoming to students of all gender identities. We have about 1,400 students on campus, so it is a small campus, a small college. Typically all 50 states from the U.S. and about 15 percent from abroad, representing about 50 different countries in our student body. About 25% of our students are students of color. In terms of our location, we are located in the state of New York in the US. Again, if you're looking at your screen, that blue line, the top of that blue line is where we're located in Bronxville, New York, which is a small suburb sitting right on top of New York City. Yonkers right to the side of us on the beautiful Hudson River where you see some students doing some environmental science research there. That's one of the larger cities in New York and then again sitting right on top of New York City. So the local train in Bronxville, which is about a 10 minute walk from campus, will take you into and through Manhattan. So that blue line that you're looking at is actually the train line that runs from campus to Grand Central Station in Manhattan. So that's a little bit about where we're located. So really you have the campus, which is suburban trees, grass, residential campus next to a larger city on top of that huge metropolis. What really makes Sarah Lawrence unique is the academic structure that we have and the different academic opportunities. So one thing that makes us more unique is that we have an open curriculum. So that's exactly as it sounds. The curriculum is open. So that really allows students to mix and match, to take different things and really carve your own academic pathway in terms of your different academic interests. So the requirements for graduation, we have classes in four different areas or four different categories. So we have classes in math and science, we have classes in the social sciences, classes in the humanities, and then classes in visual, performing, and creative arts. So our curricular requirement for students at some point in their four years before they graduate is to take at least two classes in at least three of those four academic areas. Beyond that, students are really free to design their own curriculum, really catering to what the student's particular interests are. So really what that allows you to do is if you're interested in engineering and music and philosophy and French, you can study all four of those areas. So our students graduate with a Bachelor of Art in Liberal Arts, and once they take 
bunches of classes in any of those different academic areas. We have about 50 different academic areas in those four categories. Bunches of classes that students take would then be listed as concentrations on their transcript. So most of our students have two, three, or four different concentrations and all kinds of combinations listed on their transcript. It might be concentrations in multiple areas of science, or like I said with my example earlier, it could be concentrations in each of the four different areas. So students can really explore their interests. It's also great for students that aren't quite sure what you might want to study. You don't have to pick. You can continue to explore, continue to change your mind, and really have that flexibility in that curriculum. In terms of our class sizes, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a picture of students sitting around a table. That's what our typical seminar classes look like. So roughly 90% of our classes are small seminars of usually around 12, and they're capped at 15. So all small classes sitting around a table, really getting into the classroom and discussing the material, really having that conversation back and forth. The other percentage of our classes are lecture-based classes. And for us, a lecture is typically between 30 and 45. When students do have one of those lectures, they would still have breakout sessions or recitation sections in addition to that class time. So still have a smaller class experience, even if they are taking one of our, for us, larger lecture classes. The unique part about Sarah Lawrence is in addition to those seminars, we have a co conference seminar model. So what that means is that for those seminar classes that students are taking, and again, roughly 90% of our classes are these seminars. In addition to their class time, students will meet one-on-one -on -one with their faculty member every other week. And in those meetings, they're discussing what is of particular interest to that student in that class. And that's what students are doing research on throughout the semester coming up with a project for their class. And that's really how in those classes they're demonstrating that knowledge. That might be a science experiment. It could be a traditional research paper, but many students get more creative. So it really can take on a lot of different shapes and sizes, really working one-on-one -on -one with your faculty member. One of our tour guides in the spring was telling me about a project that they did in environmental science class. And what they did was research a phenomenon in environmental science, and they wrote a play as their conference project to really show what they had learned about environmental science. Um, the students very, very interested in theater, but also has that interest in environmental science. So that was a really good way for them to combine different interests, even just in that one class. So students working one-on-one -on -one with their faculty members can really go very much in depth in their different areas of interest as it relates to that class, and then really showcase it in a number of different ways. So a lot of research, a lot of writing, a lot of discussion, a lot of hands-on work happening in our classes. There is a lot of advising that goes on at Sarah Lawrence. So some students might hear about the open curriculum and feel a little bit intimidated. What am I, what am I supposed to do? How, how, how open is this? How, how do I figure that out? So we call our faculty advisors Dons. So that is not a Godfather reference. That is something that we took from the Oxford conference model. So Dons are what we call our faculty advisors. So when students start at Sarah Lawrence, they pick from a list of typically about 70 different topics for a first year seminar. And the faculty member of that seminar would become their faculty advisor or their don. So that very first semester, they have their faculty advisor as a professor. 
and that person would continue to be their advisor that you'll see at many colleges in a similar way as well. So they have that one person that they're talking to, they're getting career advice, they're discussing their classes, that really helps make suggestions, check in with them, and really guide them along their way, along their four years. Some students will collect different advisors and go to different people for different things. Occasionally, students might connect better with an additional professor, so they might change their DON. But regardless, there is a really, really strong network of advising that students have. So they can really navigate this open curriculum with a lot of advice. Another unique thing about Sarah Lawrence is the way in which we sign up for classes. So rather than registration week, we have something called interview week. So students would meet with their faculty advisor, talk about the classes that they're considering taking for that upcoming semester. And then students make individual appointments with the faculty member that's teaching those classes. And they sit down and actually interview them. They learn more about the class, they learn more about the professor, they learn about what you might be reading or watching, they learn about what other students have done for conference projects in those classes. So they get a really good feel for the syllabus, what's gonna happen in that class. And then at the end of interview week, you would go back and talk with your faculty advisor about how all of those interviews went and then make some choices about the different classes that students would be taking for that very semester. Because there is a lot of work going in on our classes, the seminar work and the conference work, our classes are typically worth five credits and students would usually take only three classes in a semester. So you still have that 15 credit hours that you'll see at many, many colleges, but you're taking fewer classes that are worth more credits because you are spending quite a bit of time doing that research, both working in the classroom and outside of the classroom as well. So those are really some things that make academics at Sarah Lawrence unique from a lot of places um, that you might be searching for or considering. In terms of student life, we have over 100 clubs, organizations, and Division III sports on campus. Students are engaged in a lot of different things. Students have all kinds of different academic plans and academic interests. But there are some things that really are common in, in what you'll see in our students. Um, because of the nature of the academics, you really see a lot of students that are very passionate about what they're learning. They're academically curious. They want to find out why. They want to find out more questions. They want to see the connections between different areas of study. So you definitely see that really common in our student body. Because of our small size, community is definitely important to campus. Um, here you'll see students eating together, students on the women's basketball team, upper class students helping our first year students move in. So a lot of different interests, but students are very actively involved on campus. You'll see students on campus at night and on the weekends. So yes, we are very close to New York City, but that doesn't necessarily mean that students are all flocking there all of the time. Students are very busy with many, many things happening every single day happening on campus. And I can definitely attest to that. They send us a daily email about all of the things happening. So looking at that list, I think you would typically think we are a much bigger place than 1400 students. So they definitely keep themselves busy. A little bit about the admissions process and then financial aid, and then we can definitely pause and see if there are any questions or general information that you'd like to discuss tonight. We are a unique place, it's a unique place to learn. So we really wanna get to know our students as best we can. And really that's what we're doing right now. All of us in the admissions world are reading applications. 
So we have an, a holistic admissions process in which we look at every single piece that students will send into us. There is a form that many, many, many colleges use called the Common Application or the Common App. So that is an online form that students will use to apply to Sarah Lawrence. In addition to that application form, your school will send in your transcript, your school recommendation or counselor recommendation, whoever in your school is working with the common, with the college application process, they'll send in a form. That will typically accompany a school profile that tells us all about your school, tells us the curriculum that's at your school, what level of classes. They'll send us transcripts. So we're seeing how well you're performing for ninth through 12th grade when you're applying. And then one teacher recommendation. That's all that we require in the application process. We do though have a very open policy when it comes to all of the different supplements that students can choose to include if they want to. Some students really value having a conversation. They feel like that's the best way to get who they are across. So we offer virtual admissions interviews. Some students are very strong writers. So we have supplemental essays. So that would be in addition to the personal statement or college essay that's included with that application form. Some students are very creative. So they upload different pieces of art. It doesn't have to be in a particular art portfolio that's anything official. It can be a couple drawings or it can be a full portfolio if students have that. It could be recordings of something musical or theatrical that students have done. So students can really highlight who they are in whatever way that they feel suits them the best. We have been test optional for a couple decades. So testing is not something that we put a lot of weight on in our process, but students can certainly feel free to send ACT or SAT scores if you feel like you've done well and you want to share those. So really the process allows us to get to know our students as well as we can. In terms of how we're reading applications and deadlines, we have four different plans. So if you're looking at the screen, early decision one and early decision two, those are the plans that are binding. So early decision, if you think of it as your decision to attend that institution, if you're admitted, there are two different deadlines. If you're done with the application process earlier on, or if you need a li little bit more time and want to apply at that January deadline, those are our binding decisions. So if it's absolutely number one, you visited, you're not making any other considerations, you're ready to come if you're admitted, that's what early decision is for. And that's typically a pretty small percentage of our class, typically 10% or less. Early action is just taking action early. It's not binding. You do get your decision early. So early decision one and early action, those November one deadlines, you get your decision by the end of December. Early action, because it's not binding, you have your admissions decision, for the students that are admitted, you also receive your financial aid package, again, in December. So then you have a few months before that national response deadline of May 1 to decide where you might attend. Regular decision, if again, not sure you're ready to commit at that point, and you might need a little bit more time past November 1 to put together your application, Regular decision, that January deadline, students are notified in the middle to end of March. That's when financial aid packages would come out as well. And that's also a May 1st national response deadline. 
So four different plans, I always like to make sure that we define all of them because it can definitely get a little bit confusing with which is binding, which is not, and really what they all mean. In terms of financial aid, the only form that we require if you're filing taxes in the US is the FAFSA. If you're not filing taxes within the US, then you would submit financial documentation for your family's income. We do consider all students for merit-based scholarships, and we do that automatically. So if students don't have to apply, they don't have to send in additional information. With the review of the application, we look at merit scholarships. In terms of need-based financial aid, that's when our financial aid office will look at income of family and then determine need-based financial aid. So some students get both, some students get one or the other, but it's a completely separate process in terms of merit and then need-based financial aid. So that is a really quick overview of Sarah Lawrence, who we are, what's important to us, um, but I definitely welcome any questions that you have about the curriculum, about campus, about student life. So feel free to put those in Q&A. We do have virtual admission sessions, which is really what I just went through with you. Um, but additional opportunities, there is a recorded campus tour on our website. We do have in-person tours. Um, right now, they're on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. That's going to change a little bit once our students go on break for a month in a couple weeks. But we do have some students that want to work and give tours over the break. So the schedule will change a little bit, but we'll still have tours available. If you're not able to come to campus on a day that, or a time that we do have guided tours, we also have a self-guided audio tour where there are signs throughout campus with QR codes on them. Use your phone with the QR codes, and then you'll actually hear our tour guides reciting what they would typically tell you at each of those locations. So very possible to visit in person, whether you can join our scheduled guided tours or not. Okay. So that's a little bit about Sarah Lawrence. Thank you so much, Marie, uh, for joining us this evening.